No, it wasn't all the driving. I made majority of my money was from recruiting. Was recruiting, and then the the bonus, the miles that I got from the like I until I left, I still got miles. I still had drivers under me. They changed it to where you make um, an additional two cent per mile for every mile that you drive for every driver you have. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. I I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Dial face trucker in the building. What's up? What's so up? we we need to catch up. Uh, we need to catch up, Dial. Uh, last time we spoke, uh, you was still rocking out with uh with Variant, and you you was uh. Bit supporter, Varian took care of you. They sent you on trips and 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 all that good stuff. Um, then we came back and we talked uh, when Variant, well, uh, U.S. Express was brought out by Night Transportation, and uh, and now and now we got we we got another another change for you. So. Uh, mm -hmm. big question is: Are you still with Variant? Nope, not with Variant. I am my own business now. I left Variant to start my own business. It's like a mean, a means to an end, I guess you would say. Was the was the walkout amicable? Like, I mean, yeah. you told them what? What did they say when you told them that you was leaving? <laughs> They didn't want me to leave. Every time I talked to them, they were like, "You still leaving?" I'm like, "Yep, yeah, still leaving." They was like, "Is anything to say?" And I'm like, uh, "The only thing you could do is pay me what I'm, what I would make, and I could be at home every day. I work from home position. Can't do that. I can't stay. But I still don't want to work for nobody. Like all the plans that I have, I can't really do anything." As I can't do these plans when I'm working for someone else, because you're starting a business and running a business, you can't do that. A full time business, not a side gig, you can't do that and working full time. You you had plans on doing this for for a good minute because I mean because the last time we spoke, I mean you spoke highly of a variant, and I I was up under the impression that you was that you was going to move forward even after the acquisition yeah variant was always going to be the company that that's the last trucking company i drive for i'm never ever going to drive for another trucking company if i have to go back to driving i'm going back to variant but i'm not trying to work with somebody now when it hit me when sheree moore had the she trucking expo and i was feeling like on top of the world because you know i was Varian had sponsored the expo and I got to speak and I was on CNN and I'm like, this is awesome. I'm making money. I made like over a hundred thousand that year, two years in a row, actually. And I'm like, this is awesome, right? And Sheree was like, I'm not trying to run out of parade on your friend. That's what I'm going to tell you. She said, it's all gravy and everything, right? You're making good money. Company drivers is making good money. It's all good and gravy. You made a hundred thousand, over a hundred thousand, but it's not yours. And And that just hit me like, like a freight train, like, yes, you are so right. Like, man, it's not mine. I made a hundred thousand. So imagine how much they made off of me as mm. their is their business, right? And I'm just like, man, no. Nah. Ever since then I was like, I gotta just and I, I still wanna go to law school. So I this is just this is just stepping stones. I wanna be an entrepreneur, multiple business owner. I still wanna go to law school. I still and the best time to do it is just do it. Like, I keep saying I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, but I don't ever do it. So here I am. I made that move. I made the move. I just quit. I didn't have no job lined up. My business hasn't been started yet. I haven't made no money. I haven't even started anything, right? I haven't, like, went into in, in an official business yet. But I just stepped out on faith. You hit the 100 k two times over. Now, yeah. now, 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 Dow, I always got to come at you. I, I'm always got to come at you. Devil's advocate, I always got to come after you. 
Uh-huh. That 100K wasn't all through driving, though, right? No, it wasn't all through driving. I made majority of my money was from recruiting. Was recruiting, and then the the bon- the miles that I got from the like I until I left, I still got miles. I still had drivers under me. They changed it to where you make um, an additional two cent per mile for every mile that you drive for every driver you have. So literally, if I have ten drivers. That's what twenty cent per mile. I'm getting a raise of twenty cent per mile. Drink the coffee; it'll make you feel better. In the midst of all of that, did they do the did they do the change before the buyout, or they did the they did the yeah. change with the ambassador program after the buyout? They did the change before the buyout. They did a couple of changes. Like um, the first, the how it originally was was. Um, you get two thousand dollars for every driver you recruit, and then you get one to two cent per mile for every mile that they drive. Um, and then they changed it to where you get two cent per mile for every mile that they drive. Then they changed it to where you get two cent per mile for every mile, for every driver you get. So you you get an additional two cent per mile. And then they got rid of that, but people who are top performers they got um, grandfathered in. And so I was one of those people that got grandfathered in. Um, they were making all these changes because it was a lot of money being spent. And it was a high turnover rate. And that's that's my pain point with them, though, because it's like, I get it. I get the reason why. I mean, I watch the freight market. I watch the freight waves. And I, I get why drivers quit. But... You can have the same problem somewhere else at another company if you're quitting for certain reasons, right? And I guess they grew too fast, and this batch couldn't handle it. And high t- call rates or call volume, and some of the people that they are hiring under this batch wasn't indicative of what Barrett was about. And then there's Cameron leaving, and then management changing. There's so much, so many changes being made, all for the sake of trying to save face and not go bankrupt. During your time there, uh, with Variant, which which was very good for you, because like when I was with JNR Frugal, I always told people that I always told people that hey, my experience is not going to be your experience anyway. Right. So don't don't expect. To come in making the kind of money that right, yeah. that I'm making, don't I don't. T- I told my drivers that I say you're not gonna make a hundred thousand out the gate. Like, don't when you hear me say you can make a hundred thousand your first year, you gotta do stuff. You're not just making it from just driving. You gotta actually recruit. You gotta be a personal person. The people who you recruit, you gotta mentor them. You gotta make sure that they're happy. You gotta make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and then you gotta make sure that they're recruiting too if they want to recruit, right? But you're not you're not getting all that money just from driving. And another thing too, I want to tell you, you are another reason why I um thought about you know leaving too because I'm not making no money off of all of that videos and all of the advertising I did for them. CNN is gonna be out there, right? My YouTube videos are gonna be out there. I still get phone calls from people trying to get hired, and I'm not trying. To, I'm not shutting it down because I get paid off of those like my monetary stuff. The variant doesn't pay me. I'm not getting paid for all this recruiting stuff. And that all boils down to, I need my own business. Let me put all this effort into my own business. If I would have put all this effort into my own business, do you know how much money I would have made? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, it would have made more ah. money. Oh, man. Oh. All right. Okay. So before we, uh, be, before we get into uh, what you're doing right now, uh, uh, Dial Face, you, you had came across some uh negativity with with uh with a few uh tiktokers youtubers and oh, stuff yeah, like that oh yeah let's get into that uh, I'm, I'm so ready because i said when i quit <laughs> <laughs> i'm about to be petty <laughs> <laughs> well i i know there's been there there's been a few uh there's been a few a few uh issues that you had with uh with 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 some people but without getting into too people, much without getting I in it was just one 
Oh, it was one. Oh, okay, okay. The the one. I mean, well, one. It was one person, but that person had like friends. Those, you know. Well, yeah, let me. Is. Well, let me ask you this: did, did that did that particular person did they use you as uh as for the for the for the reference? Because I know I know a, a couple of YouTubers uh, allegedly yeah. used you for. So, your grinding hyena was the biggest beef that I had, and then um, she did not use my me as a reference, and that's I wasn't allowed to say her name until. I left the company. Um, gear grinding hyena. That little can I cuss on here? Uh, keep it clean. I'm trying not to keep it clean. Okay. That little person mentioned the person. Yeah. So <laughs> she um she didn't use my name, but then keeping it one hundred, she used my name. She um used my I I guess, you know, my link, clicked on the link to get up under me that variant. But I don't, I don't have no beef with her, it's just Nothing I could prove, I can say. Okay, okay. It's just it's all feelings, and you know, you know how females are. They set catty sometimes, say little slick things here and there, do little slick things here and there. You know. So it is what it is. So how was the how was the payout? Like you you said that she used you as a reference. So did you did you? Did she use you as a reference? Like, did they, did the recorder yeah, she call called you me up? afterwards. Oh, oh, She called okay. me afterwards because we had access to 10th Street. So whenever we recruited somebody, we was able to check their, their application status on 10th Street, what part, of, what process they were in, where they submitted the application, where they scheduled for orientation, where they in orientation, did they show up or did they not show up, and then were they hired. And if they weren't hired, but not a general, like not a specific reason why they weren't hired, but it'll say safety reasons or background or something like that. So we had access to that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Uh, whew. I'm going to start calling you the 100K woman over at uh variant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's, there's so somebody else who made way more money than me. I, I, I'm, I'm sure y'all had, y'all, y'all had some top, top ambassadors over there for real for real yeah. i yeah. i was saying I, I was saying that they wasn't even driving they was just straight you up you didn't have to really you didn't really have to drive crazy that is crazy but it's almost like if you were a carrier right you're a motor carrier you got your own you got a fleet of trucks you hire drivers they drive you can sit at home really and they drive you make money off of their miles, off of them driving, taking loads. That's Simple, exactly same thing. What, that's exactly what some of them did. <laughs> yeah. All right. But so I mean, shoot, I mean, I would, I like driving. So. All right. So we we got we got variant in the rear view. Uh, now we looking uh now we looking forward uh to uh new pastures, which is which is what you venturing into now. <laughs> What what are yeah. you vitri- what are you venturing into now? I am venturing into a trucking company. Um, and there's multiple facets. So I already when I was with Baron, since I was making a lot of money and I was getting this, you know, these bonus income, I decided to use that income to start a company, start a business. So I created an LLC, which is Jojan Global LLC. And that was my business that Barrient paid for, basically. And then under Jojan Global LLC, which is going to be a holdings company, um, I, I'm going to have a dispatching company. I'm going to have a um, recruiting company, and I'm going to have a virtual assistant company. Okay. All under Jojan Global. Okay. Now, 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 let's take uh, let's take the dispatching part because. Uh, it's a lot of drivers that's that's jumping into dispatching now like it's it's like dispatching it's the thing now i i've been following a couple of uh quote unquote gurus that sell their 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 classes to to do dispatching and stuff like that one in particular uh okay so hot coffee hot coffee Okay, room for cream. Tight 
totally leave room for Craig. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Because this is my voice? This is my voice. She said she claims that she could get you a dispatching service with just a calculator, a computer, a cell phone, and the internet. That's about it. That's all you need. Hook me up with about $250, $300, $500. And I can get oh. you set up with that. But uh, but it seems as though it seems as though drivers are 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 jumping on that side of the tracks now they feel that they since they just driving all day and maybe on their 10 hour on a 34 hour or something like that they can they could just do dispatching on the side so what made you decide to do dispatching and how did you get into dispatching did you go through a guru or did you what, what was what was your route um well, I'm going to preface that by saying when I was driving, I always watched YouTube videos on how to, like, different businesses I could start, different ways to make money, different entrepreneurship paths and stuff like that. I feel like an idle mind is a devil's workshop, so I'm always trying to put something good in my mind to, to come bring out good stuff. And I started just watching, I used, I watched Truck and Hustle a lot, right? These, there's people out here making money. And I'm trying to figure out how can I get a piece of that pie? Again, at the expo, the She Trucking Expo, I think Charmaine Jeffers, she said, um, it's a billion dollar industry out here and I'm just trying to get a piece of the pie. And I'm like, me too. <laughs> and so I just was watching different YouTube videos and I came across Truck and Hustle and I came across Charles Mundy who has ELLC, uh, Exodus Logistics um, Dispatching Service and our uh, class or school, whatever. And I felt his passion, like, to help people. And first of all, this all goes back to me being a survivor of human trafficking and domestic violence, right? I knew that I wanted to help survivors get out of that, you know, cycle of violence and, and become self-sufficient, become, um, to create generational wealth and financial freedom. That's what I live for, right? So I was like, how can I help these girls, these women, or men, whoever, right? And initially it was, well, maybe if I got them out of their environment and got them into a truck and they started driving trucks, then they'll be safe, right? They'll be away from home. That's how I got away. I, that's, I started driving trucks. They'll have their own place because they have the truck they can sleep in and they'll, all they need is a phone. They can get a government phone, the Obama phone, and they can drive and they'll be safe. But then I know, noticed that some people may not want to drive trucks. They may not, they probably can't get a CDL. Like a lot of survivors, they can't, um, they, their abuser or their trafficker took their, their stuff, their government IDs and birth certificates to try to keep them down. So I was like, maybe they can't do that. So what other options are there for these, for these women or men? And so I was like, well, dispatching is an option. Pilot car is an option. Um, Driving trucks is an option. Doing a virtual assistant is an option. Opening a trucking company, basically, a trucking business. I know I'm good at trucking, and I'm a survivor, and I, and I know that. So those two things, I merge those two together to try to create something that can, that can do on the go. They can do behind their, survivor, their traffickers back if they still are in it. Like, they can actually set up a, a, a plan for success to escape that cycle of violence. And dispatching seemed to be the, the first thing that it, came across my mind. It was, first it was pilot car, but it takes a lot of money to start that up. So the best for a survivor to start up, you know, being independent with a low overhead would be dispatching. And so when I was looking on YouTube, I found um, Truck and Hustle. He did a video, an interview with Charles Mundy, and he was talking about God and religion. Like he's a, he's a spiritual person. And I felt, I felt that. I felt like you know, he would be able to help. And everything that he does in his training, like that you pay for, he actually puts those videos online. So the only thing that you're really paying for is um, the one-on-one -on -one if you need to speak to him or for the, the network, of, like his whole network. Everything else, all the training is free, basically. It's online. And he says that on the, on the website, on the YouTube channel, on Truck and Apple. So I started looking into all of those videos and I'm like, I definitely want to, I want to try to 
pay for it. I want to try to buy a class. And when I purchased his course, it was actually um, on a discount, half off. So I paid like $250. And so he was good and everything was good with that. And I was learning. And then I found um, uh, Kiera Henderson. And she is the trucking guru. And I was looking at her videos and how she said she was a felon. She doesn't have a CDL, but she created millionaires. And she's a millionaire, multimillionaire. And I saw her on Truck and Hustle. And then I saw her on other interviews. And I'm like, okay. And I have a mentor. And before I even started doing this dispatching stuff, uh, my mentor actually sent me some information about here. And so I knew about her before I even knew about Charles. But her classes are a little bit more expensive. So I was like, I can't afford that right now. but as I started following and following and learning and learning, I ended up buying one of her courses too, right? And her course is on a discount. And my goal was to, they're teaching people how to be a dispatcher. I want to hire and mentor dispatchers under my company. So I was like, if I can get a survivor, human trafficking and domestic violence, if they're in jail and the court system has a program where they provide work services and education to these women. I want to link up with somebody who offers training for dispatching and make the state pay them to train the women who need it, who's going to work for me. So initially, I, I, I spoke to Charles about it, and he was like, I'm going to get you in contact with Ramel on with, um, Truck and Hustle. But that didn't come through. Then I talked to Kira about it, and she's really cool with, I think, um, Clarissa Rankin. I don't think I don't think Clarissa and I are cool. So she might have her ear and she might have said something. I don't know. But here ain't giving me the time of day. But I'm still in her group. I'm in her tribe. I, I respect her. I love her. Like she has the information that she has in her tribe. That it was worth every single dime, every single dime. So um, but I still want to get a trainer that because, you know, Workforce Solutions, they're, they're paying people, they're paying colleges and people to train for CDL. And there's court programs where instead of going to jail, if you're, tra if you're trafficked, they will put you in a program where they'll help you get training and education and, and work services. So why can't I be one of those resources for trucking, for dispatching? And I need somebody who's actually, you know, teaching it. I'll teach it. I don't want to teach it, though. I just want to help. I just want to mentor these women and, and get them into the business. I want somebody else to teach it. So um, she, so that was how that started. I got all the information from there. I got all my questions answered. I pretty much knew what I needed to know. There's a couple of questions I still didn't, you know, know about. And I still had questions about. And then I found um, this white lady. Her name is Sassy Dispatcher, the Sassy Dispatcher or something like that. And she is, um, she has dispatching training center, dispatch training center or something like that. She has really good information. Like she actually does live calls with, with her students. They actually take live calls and she reports it and she has so much information. She knows nothing about trucking when she first started. She wasn't even in the United States. And because she went from not knowing anything about transportation and the trucking industry to owning a successful dispatching service and school, I learned a lot from her too. And so I put all of that knowledge together, especially, and then with the knowledge that I have from all of the friends that I have, like, you know, who are owner operators and fleet carriers and managers and all that, and all the information I learned at Variance and all of my personal information, like, you know, the information I've learned driving trucks, I'm like, I think I could do this. I can literally start a dispatching service and then I can hire survivors of human trafficking and domestic violence as independent contractors, and they can become dispatchers, and I can mentor them, and I can start a, a, a nonprofit organization to give them all the services that they need. And then this money will help me open up other businesses, like truck parking, drop lots. Um, it will put me in the room with people who have connections with government contracting. And, you know, stuff like that. So I'm doing it because I don't want to just be a dispatcher and make money. I'm doing it because I want to save people's lives. And that's what got me trucking saved my life. And I feel like 
it's my calling to save other people's lives. I have to pay it for it. All right. And that's why I'm doing it. Um, how about a smoothie? What's in that? Smoothie's a juice drink. We want coffee. Buddy, relax. Paying it for it, saving lives. Dial face mm -hmm. trucker just doing it all. This should just be dial face LLC up in this piece, man. Dial face LLC. I mean, that sounds. I don't think I can get that. I can't get that. Um, the website, the web, the web page, the, the URL, dollface.com. That's what's up, man. I, I am thrilled that you're doing what you're doing. And you've been saying it all this time. You've been saying that you wanted to do certain things, certain different aspects, and you doing it and and giving up varying, giving them up to do it is a hard thing to do, considering that you said you liked them and that would be the only company that you drive for and everything, but well, you stepped out on faith to, to to make your situation for your family a hell of a lot better, man. And I commend you for it. Um, Dow face. Let me let me ask uh -huh. you this before we get on up out of here. Um, dispatching, as I was, as I said pre, as I said previous before, when I said it, said it a few a few seconds ago. Everybody is is jumping in it. Uh, do you uh -huh. th you you don't think that this this uh, this field is getting saturated? I mean, I mean, when when a lot of people jump in jump into a saturated field, is it's kind of hard to get to get clients to get owner operators because they all saturated. Do you do you feel that you still got a got a niche uh, that you got? that you can uh, get into it and, and be successful at it? Definitely, because look how many people are trying to get into trucking. How many motor carriers that are getting their MC number, right? Every day, there's new trucks trying to come out on the road. But also, just because you're a dispatcher don't mean you're going to be successful, right? You have to offer a service. You have to, people pay for something that's going to help them, that's going to make them laugh or that's going to um, that's going to help them make them laugh or that's going to solve a problem. That's what people pay for. And they pay for convenience, right? So if you're good, if you're a dispatcher, you're solving a problem and you're helping them with something. And if you're good at that and you're helping them make money, then, yeah, I think that, that'll work. Plus, one truck or one carrier, one own operator can have multiple dispatchers. He doesn't have to put one dispatcher. He can have multiple dispatchers. Um, especially if the dispatcher is a one one person operation, they probably can't be up twenty four seven. But there might be another dispatcher that works nights, right? Also, you have to have like a um, like a niche, right? So you have dispatchers that work just for, for oil field. They got dispatchers that do just hot shot or box truck or flatbed or whatever the whatever equipment power only dispatchers, right? And then then there's services that they offer. Different dispatchers offer different services. They they might offer your IFTA registration and keeping up with that. They might do back office for you, keeping up with your paperwork and and all of your insurance and stuff like that. They might offer factoring. They might be a factoring company. They may be a broker. The dispatcher might be a broker, and they might be able to just get you straight dedicated loads. Um, and then for me, what I plan on doing is I want to work in the sector of government contracting. So all of the drivers that I work with, I want to help. I want to work with new carriers that are starting out, new own operators that are starting out. I want to help them get started from the bottom up. And then I want to get them government contracts because that's where the money is at. I want to help them scale their business and then get government contracts. So I'm not just trying to dispatch them. I want to, like I said, help save people's lives. Dial face trucker, everybody. <laughs> Big things coming. Big things coming. So in the midst of all this right now, you you getting everything together. You're putting, uh, you're putting the package together. You got your website, which is? It's going to be dispatchprohtx.com. It's not up yet. Still building it, but dispatch pro HTX. 
All right. Which is Houston, Texas. By the sounds of it, it sounds like you're giving this 120%. You let Variant go to 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 do this 100%, 120% full time. I have to. I have to. I have to. I mean, if it's if it's if it's true money in here like everybody is saying, then I ha- I have to. Like you can't give it 50%. You got to give it 100%. What business owner is going to give their business 50%? If I gave 100% to Marion and I and I made 100,000, what if I gave 200% to my company? How much can I make? All right. Any idea where uh, when this when when you're gonna have all this up and running, or are you? Um, I'm hoping to have it at least by the middle of the month. So by the 15th, what's today? The seventh is about the next week. Right now, I'm pretty much done with my my landing page on my website. Now I'm just gonna be getting my documents together, the paperwork. I'm gonna be sending out carrier packets and dispatcher packets, and then settling on what type of truck management system I want to use and what load boards I want to use and stuff like that. And then I have a mentor too that works for SCORE and he's telling me about, um, he knows some shippers that may be on board to give me dedicated routes for the cause. Like I'm trying to help survivors and they want to be behind, they want to back that. So um, that, that's, that'll probably be the only reason why I'll, I'll be held up is waiting on them. But just putting the finishing touches on everything. I don't want to rush it. I might that might be longer than seven days. But I want to make sure I do it right. I want to make sure I'm, I'm doing people right because I'm there. I'm asking drivers to put their livelihood in my hands. So I don't want to rush that. I want to make sure I have all my T's crossed, all my eyes dotted. Dial face trucker man. If you guys uh, want to get with her, give her a chance. You guys can follow her on her uh, social media. Uh, I, she has a YouTube page, Dialface. What is it? Dialface Trucker Nation or Dialface Nation? Dialface Trucker. Dial Everything face. is Dialface Trucker. What? What? There. That's, look. All you got to do is type in Dialface Trucker, and all her social should come up. If you guys need that good uh, dispatching service or looking for some drivers, and get a free week. I do a free week, so. They want to try me out for a week for free and see how I do for them. No contracts, no no commitment, nothing. Just let's see what go, how it goes. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real way, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a sound. And I want you to miss me when I'm not around. Come dive in my ocean, dip on my boat. My love is like lotion. It's all over you. You all over me, cause you my love. Tell you I don't fuck around Cause they got you insecure You your feelings now Don't start what I